hi everyone welcome to the second video on syllogism as discussed in my first video on syllogism that i will cover both the methods first without the venn diagram method and in this video we will look at the venn diagram method so how i have divided this video is this video will primarily touch upon the concepts of venn diagram so in the next video i'll be actually taking questions and solving questions through venn diagrams but it's imperative that you have a solid foundation so i thought we'll cover all the concepts look at how to arrive at different possibilities before we learn the minimum overlapping concept and start solving questions so let's get started so first things first uh, what is the concept of venn diagram so i'm sure in school we remember that we must have studied set theory that means uh, in our earlier classes the concept of sets is like that so for example let's say a equals to a is a set wherein there are certain numbers in a let's say 1 2 3 there is b and there are certain numbers in let's say uh, b let's say 1 2 4 and let's say there is another set c which has numbers like 1 2 3 4 5 6 etc okay so these are three sets so we learned the concepts of subset we learned the concept of superset so for example if i were to represent these a b c in a diagrammatic fashion that is nothing but your venn diagrams i can say let's suppose this is your a and let's suppose this is your b so what it means is that the common part so your one and two these are the two elements that were common if you see here in a and b right where in b alone you had four in a alone you had three so this is how you could probably represent now if you were to represent c as well how you could do that is you can say okay c is like the super set because c contains all the elements of a and b right so let's say c has one two three four which is here and five comma six so c has also these additional elements so basically venn diagrams is the diagrammatic way to represent the sets and that's what we do here so that means the question format again would be same so like how we have the terms here how we had the elements here similarly here you have these terms bats mammals birds or bats so in the premise you have two statements and each statement has two terms right and there is a particular way how you see the relationship which is described by this this all bats are mammals that means between bats and mammals the relationship is of which format is of the universal affirmative right universal all and similarly here this is universal negative between birds and bats so what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to merge these two statements and we are supposed to say whether we can deduce these conclusions from these two statements that is what our deductive logic is our syllogism is okay so in similar fashion like how we did earlier so we will be looking at things like universal affirmative different types of statements so broadly there are four types of statements your universal affirmative universal negative particular affirmative and particular negative so that's what we will look at so before i explain how what do we interpret from these statements there's a word of caution so one is do not use reverse logic in these questions what does that mean that means that if somebody saying all cats are dogs that may not necessarily mean all dogs are cats we'll stick to uh, facts we'll stick to the rule and understanding and not applying too much of common sense and you know worldly knowledge knowledge like how we do in inductive logic all right so let's look at the first statement the first statement is universal affirmative statement it says all cats are dogs so let's understand this relationship through venn diagrams so if i were to say how can i represent this all cats are dogs in a diagrammatic fashion how can we do that so let's say if i say how about i write something like this i say okay these are two diagrams and let's say it is this dogs and cats so is this a true representation of this so can i infer that this is the correct possibility of this it says all the cats are dogs now cats look at this element right so let's say this element this element is nothing let's say this is a cat is this cat a dog no that means is this 
actually representing the statement no therefore this is not the correct diagram how about this if i say all cats are dogs can i say that this is a correct possibility can i say that this is p1 correct possibility of this yes because all the cats you look at all the cats all the cats are in the dog circle right that means we can say all cats are dogs so that is exactly why i was saying no reverse logic that means if you say all cats are dogs it does not necessarily mean all dogs are cats for example uh, if i say all keralites are indians can i also say that that means all indians are keralites that would not be true right so that is exactly what i'm trying to say so this is your first possibility now is there any other way to represent this any other possibility how about this cats comma dogs that means you have the same circle for cats that means cats equals to dogs so this is your second possibility now how to check whether this is true or not all you have to do is whether this is satisfying the condition the condition says all the cats are dogs so are all the cats can you find a single cat which is not a dog no that means this is also the correct possibility so there are two ways two possibilities to this this particular statement universal affirmative okay let's move on let's look at the second type of statement it says no cat is dog so that means for cat let's say this is the diagram for cat and this is the diagram for dog it says no cat is dog that means these are disjoint circles right these are disjoint sets there is no no element of cat which is a dog that means there is no intersection right so this is how we can represent now there is only one possibility there is no other way you can represent this okay let's move to the third statement the third statement says some cats are dogs now what does this statement mean so if you were to represent this through a diagram right how you can do that so for example most of the people will do get this one first right so they'll say this is cats this is dogs so they're saying hey here is the intersection so this represents cats are dogs some cats are dogs and this is absolutely fine so this is one possibility but i want you to pause the video here and think about more possibilities if you can represent this statement through more diagrams so this is one possibility what is the other possibility so let's say can we say this how about this is this a correct possibility some cats are dogs can this be the second possibility now most of you will say this is not correct and why is because you're saying it says some cats are dogs it's not saying all cats are dogs and that's where i said please do not use common sense or worldly knowledge now the problem is we do not know what some actually means so technically speaking in the deductive logic parlance some means at least one at least one please and i think this is news to a lot of people some means at least one the moment it says some cats are dogs so don't say that it is all cats are dogs don't worry about that our we don't have to use reverse logic all we have to say is whether this diagram is satisfying the condition that at least one cat is a dog at least one cat can you say is a dog here of course so that means this is a correct possibility okay what other possibilities can we draw so that means at least one cat is a dog so how about this diagram How about this diagram is this a correct possibility i am saying at least one cat is a dog so look at this element is this element in the cat circle it's also in the dog circle that means this is also a correct possibility so this is your third possibility so we have discussed three possibility do you think there is any more possibilities think about it how about this case if i say that means it says at least one cat is a dog so this is the extreme case of this equation right and this is also a correct possibility see we are discussing possibility so all these are possible cases because all these diagrams really satisfy this condition so that means for particular affirmative statement there are four types of diagrams okay now let's look at the last one it says some cats are not dogs so now that you know some and what is the meaning of some 
so we said some means at least one can we now try so i would request you pause the video again and try on your own so some cats are not dogs so how can we represent this one is our standard venn diagram where we are saying some cats are not dogs so i'm saying this shaded region this these are all cats that are not dogs at least one cat so for example here at least there is one cat which is not a dog and which is fair enough so this is possibility one what other possibility can we draw how about this one i am saying at least one cat is not a dog so look at this possibility is this cat is this cat a dog it's not a dog that means it is validating the condition so that means this is your possibility number 2 and again also look at the extreme cases at least one cat is not a dog how about this diagram if i say this this is cats this is dogs this is your we are saying at least one cat is not a dog and here in fact none of the cats are dogs right not a single cat is dog that means this is also validating the condition so this is what we mean by understanding the possibilities through these venn diagrams we looked at four types of statements universal affirmative universal negative particular affirmative and particular negative and we looked at all the possibilities so for universal affirmative all cats are dogs types of statement we looked at how many possibilities were there possibility 1 and possibility 2 for universal negative it was the simplest case how many possibilities were there only one possibility was there right this joint sets for this special case which is particular affirmative there were four possibilities if you remember because we understood that the meaning of the term some means at least one so there are four possibilities for some not that means particular negative we looked at the cases and we found how many possibilities three possibilities so before we really move uh, ahead and start solving questions and start understanding the concepts of minimum overlap my request to all of you would be that please be very very thorough and clearly understand all the different possible cases that arise out of these four typical uh, conditions and then we will solve more questions so thanks for watching the video and i look forward to seeing you in the next video where we will solve questions and understand what is the concept of minimum overlap Thank you.